The action continues now with Talkin' Money and Jeff Tarbell. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Getting fired up. <laughs> Seven minute abs. That's right, That's baby. Be... <laughs> Until somebody comes out with six minute abs. <laughs> That's not going to happen. How you doing? This is Talking Money. Jeff Tarbell, John Fodero in for our uh, last two-hour segment of the year. Go back to an hour next week and um, lots of fun games. We did give away four of our Mix It Up Beverage Machine Rounds. we got one more if you want to jump in there at 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. And uh, we'll even give a few to the SPCA who's texting one if they can use a few for their uh, Barktoberfest. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll get, hold a couple back for that. No problem. And uh, we've got so much stuff to cover. John started reading me all the the lines from something about Mary, which is one of our. Uh, that want to be one of our quiz questions. Well, gonna... It was. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> did Alrighty I get? Then. Did I give it away? Yeah, I'd say you just gave the answer away. Oh well, we'll, we'll do it again at the end. There's a very very short attention span for the well, listeners. Four this people show. listen, so maybe <laughs> later it'll be right. ten. Someone else will tune in. And they won't get it. So we'll save that one. I did see uh, in the news this week. So lots of little things happening. Um, Quite frankly, it's just kind of quiet on on the front, and I think everybody now is kind to. Well, it's, I think it's been quiet for one is that we're finishing up the end of summer and we're finishing up the vacations and we're finishing up all the just miscellaneous stuff that goes on. And starting next week, you see the conventions. Republican convention was what two days two nights ago. The Democrats are next week, so we start we finally start getting into the real political season, and then we're. 90 days away from the election, is that right? Getting close to 80, day, 80, 90 days away, somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. So um, 120. We'll start to see some very interesting things occur, and I tore out some of them in here today as we get a little closer. And I think that if you, as one party starts to see either they're going to make it to the, you know, if the Democrats are going to hold on, you'll see probably one set of challenges or one set of uh, ideas come out of them. If they feel like they're starting to lose, you might see more crazier things come out the one i keep hearing a lot about is is the debt forgiveness on student loans it's come, it's come up probably ad nauseum you know we're giving away we're giving debt forgiveness to on the home loans why aren't we doing the thing on the same thing on the student loans and part of me says that's logic that makes sense i mean we've we that doesn't make sense to me personally but i get where you're where you're coming from it's like okay we're, we're just giving stuff away why not why stop there why are we stopping at houses why aren't we doing student loan debt uh, why are we, you know, why aren't we giving away credit card? Why are we, do, you know, doing all that stuff? Why don't we do give away everything? And I think as we get closer to the election, if uh, we may start to see more of these things start to happen, the student loan one is the one that gets me the most. And I was kind of circled it in here somewhere. There was a a quote regarding. Let's see if I can find it here real fast. Regarding house price, uh, the, regarding um, loan modifications, and they quoted a, a young woman in the paper that said, um, "Boy, if I didn't have to." If I didn't do the right thing and go to school, I could afford a home. This was her. This was her logic in the in the paper, and I thought, wait a minute, nobody put a gun to your head to go to school. I don't care if you go to school or you don't go to school. And there's some great jobs that don't require a BS, a BA, an MBA. You know, in fact, there's probably a shortage of people that are working. You know, in the in the in the manufacturing and type of business. So, but this is the mentality that we've bred. By giving, 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 giving stuff away. Now that the people with student loans feel like, well, you should just give me an education. You, you gave those guys a house. And part of me says, how do you argue with them? <laughs> I mean, we've come, we've come so far that uh, nothing's out of, the, out of the realm anymore. Last time I checked, though, we, were, we had a little deficit, though, in, in our side of things, didn't we? Yeah, well, that doesn't stop anything. That, John, you're, you're trying to throw logic <laughs> into an illogical conversation. If you're going to keep that crap up. You can go next door onto the <laughs> FM station there and spout your little your little logical views. Go oh, on this station over here. We're dealing in reality, John. Reality is, is that people don't pay back. That's right. The Sorry. stuff they owe. I apologize. Yeah. So get it straight. Um, so anyway, we'll see how that how things work out. But I I mark my words. Something will happen with student loan debt. Mark my words. I don't know what it'll be. I don't know what to what extent. Um, it is now one of the next to the mortgages, the largest debts carried by consumers 
or individuals around. And is is it a is it holding people back from getting a job? No. Is it holding them back from doing something else? Maybe. Certainly, student loan debt. If you're coming in to qualify for a house, we got to calculate it. If you're paying it back. Um, here's the challenge I think you run into is that currently under rules right now, if you, uh, I don't think you can even, can you, can you declare bankruptcy on a student, on a student loan debt? I know, I know if you, I know if you don't make student loan payments or you're delinquent on student loan payments, we, in the mortgage end of things, you cannot get another government loan. So if you were looking for a VA or an FHA loan or something to that effect, and you have other other government debt you haven't paid back, that can be a real issue for you. I also Definitely. believe I also believe it's an issue for you if you are uh, applying for federal employment um, so through some of their background checks and other things too. That can be an issue as well. So what happens if we're going to forgive student loans, which has been been discussed? Uh, what does that mean for you down the road? And I think it's not good, but I don't know what I don't you know I don't know how we'll have to treat it. Right now, if you if you if you walk away from an FHA home loan or, or Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac or VA, we only you know it's this, I, I say this flippant, but we only hold you accountable for three years. I mean, remember in the old days when people said if you declare bankruptcy, you can't do anything for seven. Right. You know, well, it's on your credit for seven. Bankruptcy is only a two year, a two year hold back. So it's all, we've already marginalized these these things so much anyway. Maybe the student loan will become the same issue. But I, I just I just say knock on wood. Something's going to happen with the student loan debt because that both parties, particularly I think the party in control right now, want to get more of the younger voters in. And if you follow the polls and things that are going on right now, the younger voters are the ones that are most disenchanted with the process right, right now because they're not, you know, they they're the ones least likely to vote. And if you hand a carrot to them and say, "Hey, look, vote for me. I don't care who which side you're on. Vote for me, and I'll wipe out your student loan debt." You might get them into the polls, so I I'm worried about that one. That's a lot of a lot more money we can't afford to walk away from. But right. you watch, something's going to happen. I did see the uh, the big man in charge there, Mr. Bernanke, was in Wyoming this week, the Grand Teton National Park. I have not been there. Been to Jackson Hole. I, they actually they actually say it's in. J- it's kind of there. Well, yeah, it's it's down the road, kind of there. <laughs> Around the corner. Around the corner, up up north of there, the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. And uh, the chairman of the Fed was in Jackson Hole to talk about the economy, which he admitted and doesn't take a lot of brains to realize the economy is not doing much. In fact, it's not doing anything to speak of. And the biggest poll that I could put out of, pull out of the quotes from today's newspaper was that uh, they are looking at taking a further step along the path to more policy stimulus more likely a third round of asset purchases QE3, which is jargon for qualitative, qualitative easing, which we did QE2, we did QE1, but basically means we, the Fed, are going to pump more money into the system. We're going to go buy more bonds, buy more mortgage-backed securities. We're going to we're going to become a buyer again. They've been a buyer now. They're, we're, they're already the largest holder of, I believe, of treasuries in the world, uh, even, I think, more than China. So they're going to go buy more bonds and try to get more stimulus, if you will, into the economy, and they're going to lower rates. So they're going to lower rates that are already at one. Crazy. <laughs> they're going to lower rates to zero. They're going to give you back 1%. So here, not only will you borrow, we'll pay you to take our money. I don't, I don't, this is not. About some jobs, maybe. This is not the problem. The problem we have right now is not that rates need to go lower. I can tell you right now that our company at Comstock probably has a hundred home buyers pre-approved, loans ready to go. They have their money ready to go in place. Can't find a house. It ain't because of rates. No. And if rates were three or four or five, they would all still buy. Uh, so that's not the problem. And yet, this is going to be our big time solution. And this just goes to show if you're following, that there isn't much that they can do. I mean, they've kind of used their bag of tricks, right? I mean, they've, we're, using, we're reusing the same trick again. And the problem is it's cool when you're going from six to four and four to two, boom, boom, boom. But, I mean, we're down near, we're damn, damn near zero. 
So we're going to go from one to zero, or one and a half to zero, or I mean, we been there. It just that isn't the holdup. And my contention is this, and we got to take another break here in a minute. My contention is that we're not going to see anything of substance until the election is over, and it doesn't matter who wins. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't matter it, because if if President Obama continues on, then people will make their assumptions on what he will do and how that affects their business. Good, bad, or indifferent. Some people will think it's great. Some people will think it's the worst thing in the world. Some people will just say, finally, we just know who's going to be there. They'll be able, it doesn't matter. But then you can make a business decision. I'm going to – remember these companies are sitting on trillions of dollars of cash. Huge amounts. Cash. Not good when a company sits on cash. We need them to spend cash and hire you and me and build something. But that isn't going to happen until the election is settled. Same thing with, with uh, Governor Romney. If, he, if he's uh, hired – and he wins the election. Some people will think it's horrific. Some people think it's a genius. And most people in the middle will be like, okay, I think I think I know what that means for my business. And they'll make some decisions going forward as well. But until then, I don't see anything going on. And I don't care what the Fed does. The Fed, the Fed can make rates minus 5%. It doesn't matter. People who aren't comfortable or don't think they're going to have a job aren't going to buy. People who – what we need people right now is to sell. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We Put need your house up for sale. We need you to move. And I know you want to move. And I don't care whether you're moving up, down, or sideways. We need you to move and get out of your house so we can put somebody else in it. <laughs> Hurry up and die so we can put somebody else in <laughs> like in the bed in the hospital, you know. But I mean, And there's a bunch of people that want to move and who just can't, you know, because if they short sale, then they're out for a couple of years. Or they feel like if I just wait a little longer, I'll get my money back. And I think you have to look, you have to ask yourself, you know, life is too short to sit around and just hold off for something yeah. you want to do. It's the reason, the reason my wife and I moved. We, you know, I mean, the timing wasn't ideal, but we finally found something we liked, found someone who wanted to buy our house. And, yeah, we probably could have got more, but I probably could have paid more. And had I waited a year, what if rates were 5%? I got mine in the threes. Yeah. You know, anything I would have gained on the sale, I would have lost on their interest rate. On the interest rate. And, and this is a discussion. I have people call me all the time. I tell you right now, I, I, know, I know personally – some husbands and wives are about ready to kill each other because one of them wants to move and the other one says, well, I'm going to hold out for my price. And I'm looking at him and saying, okay, you're, you're 95% of the way there, what you want. And so you get you wait on another year and you get your price and rates go up 2% on your next house. You've lost everything yeah. you waited for. Yeah, like you said, you're going to make it up on what you're buying. And in, you're the, in the meantime, you're not getting any loving from your wife. <laughs> it's it's a all, bad scenario. It's all downhill from there. Who we talked to last week, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, no, uh, it's probably I bet him. you he bought a house. <laughs> You probably did Is too. Rick, or I don't remember. <laughs> We've got to do this. We've got to take another break. We do have some things to give away during the. You want to do a quiz question? Or you want to just give away more stuff? What do Let's you want? Just to do? give away some more stuff. Okay, three three nine eleven forty, one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty, and you can text us at forty four eleven forty. If you name, if you know the name of the city, the area that Mr. Bernanke was in this week for his seminar, I just said it two seconds ago. Uh, three three nine eleven forty, one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. You can text us at forty four eleven forty. I'll give you a four pack. Oh, what do you want to do? Oh, you I want was to do thinking th- some golf. Okay. And thinking where it was. Yeah, do the golf. Let's do, do the, some Nakoma golf. The Nakoma Golf Resort. Around the golf, yeah. Okay, we'll do that. We'll give you a, um, a round of golf up in the Nakoma Resort up in uh, the Gray Eagle area. and um, Beautiful that, place. That place is, go- is gorgeous. And what we're going to do, by the way, just to give you a heads up, I'm going to take all the golf winners. over the. Uh, and we ha- so, a couple things. That resort closes at the end of October for weather. So, we're going to blow these out in the next three weeks. And then on the third week, I'm going to pick one of you that won, and we're going to send you to a full weekend up there. They give you the hotel room, unlimited golf. They do a bunch of stuff up there for you. So we'll pick one of the winners out of the Nakoma Golf. So make sure you can get up there and use them. If you, you right. know, if you don't, don't call in a win if you can't get up and play a little golf because um, we'll try to save them for those people who can, who can get up there. So NakomaGolfResort.com, which is N-A-K-O-M-A, NakomaGolfResort.com. So we'll take the first two callers, if you can tell me who or where, Mr. Bernanke was this week in one of my favorite spots in the world. 339-1140, You can text us at forty four eleven forty. This is Talking Money. His name is John Fodorero. My name is None of Your Business, and we're going to be right back. Jack. Yeah. 